You'll find this procedure useful if you do any kind of portrait photography. In portraits of people, the connection between the viewer and the subject is usually through the eyes. In this tutorial, we'll make the eyes more compelling. In your actual work, you may decide not to take it to the point we take it here, but it's great to have the option. The first thing we do is clean up the whites of the eyes. We want to remove distractions like red veins, rogue eyelashes, any makeup smears, that kind of thing. The whites here are fairly clean in both eyes. We have a couple of spots to take care of, and the beginnings of veining here. In the other eye, a couple of things to clean up, and a few rogue hairs. We'll start with a new empty layer. Today I'm going to be using the spot healing brush to clean up the distractions. I'm using a very small hard brush for this. I'll speed up the video while I'm doing the cleaning. Okay, to see what we actually did with the healing brush, I'll turn off our image and we're left with our corrections. The spot healing brush was a great choice. Notice how it changed colors as we brushed, even in mid-stroke. It really did blend in nicely. We'll name this layer Whites of the Eye. Next, we'll add some color segments to the eye. Notice the color that's there to begin with. We're going to push that color, add saturation, and at one point even use a color that currently doesn't exist to add more drama to the eyes. We'll use a separate layer for each color we work with. So we'll create a new empty layer and choose a very small, medium soft brush. For this image, I've got the brush set for 9 pixels. We press the Alt key, option on a Mac, and sample a color to work with. Before we start brushing, we'll open up the color picker. Here's the color we sampled. It's a darker orange. I'll choose a brighter version with more saturation and click OK. Notice where the light is hitting the eye here. What we want to do is brush our color in on the opposite side of the iris. We don't need to be that precise. We'll just roughly follow what's happening in the eye. Then we'll go through the procedure again using another sampled color, green this time. And finally, we'll pick a color that's not in the eye, maybe this blue, and brush in some of that. Next we'll blur each of the color layers a bit each one with a slightly different radius setting between 1 and 3. With the layer selected, we go into the Filter menu, then Blur, and choose Gaussian Blur. We set our radius and then click OK. We do this for each of the color layers. We'll then select all the color layers and set the blend to Overlay. Still with the layer selected, we press Ctrl G, Command G on a Mac, to create a group for our color layers. I'll call the group Colors. We can then set the opacity of the group down. I'm setting mine to about 50%. Now we'll create two curve adjustment layers. We're going to use these to burn and dodge and give our eyes more dimension and shape. We'll start by naming each of the new layers. This one Burn and this one Dodge. With our burn layer selected, I'll click on the sampling icon and then click on this part of the iris and drag down to darken it. Right now, Curves is darkening everything, but we'll then click on the mask and press Ctrl I, Command I on a Mac to invert the mask. With the mask selected, we'll use a soft white brush with opacity and flow set to 100% and we'll brush the perimeter of the iris of each eye. Then we'll change the opacity to about 50% and brush the area again with a larger brush. The result is crisp near the edge and more feathered as we move into the body of the iris. 
Next, on the dodge layer, we'll sample the iris again and drag up to set our dodging value. We'll then invert the mask using Control-I, Command-I on the Mac. Then with a soft white brush set to 100% opacity and flow, we'll brush an arc opposite to where the catch lights are. My brush size is about three quarters the size of the area between the edge and the pupil. Finally, we'll add a brightness contrast layer, push the contrast up about midway, and then invert the mask. Then brush the iris in. I'll create a group for the burn, dodge, and contrast layers. And finally, put all the eye enhancements into a final group. I can then lessen the effect if I need to using the layers opacity slider. Here's the before, and here's after. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. To learn more about Valley Photo Workshops, I hope you'll visit the site, valleyphotoworkshops.com. Thanks for watching.